Hey guys, and today I'm doing kind of an update to an old tutorial that I did on loot tables. This one is kind of like the second loot table tutorial, and it's meant for roughly 1.13, 14, 15, 16 kind of area. Um, so we're going to cover four use cases and then kind of show you some extra stuff with the generator. So we got entities, chests, and blocks. There's a couple others and I'll talk about them, but I won't show you examples. So loot tables are pretty simple. What they do is they allow you to choose between one thing and another or just one thing and drop it based off of when something happens. So for example, with entities, I can spawn this pig and when it dies, it will drop me cooked steak. Now, the reason that it does this is because I have a loot table. So you go into your data pack, you go data, and then you go loot tables. Uh, you can do one in your namespace or the default namespace, and we'll go over the differences there. But um, essentially you have, well, you have two main differences. So if you do a loot table inside of the main namespace, inside the Minecraft namespace in your data pack, then this loot table will replace existing ones, which we do that later. Um, but this one we're doing our own. So we're going to do loot tables and then make a chest uh, folder for it. And this one is called Porky. So this loot table was actually generated from Git, uh, uh, Misode's GitHub page where he has a loot table generator. And this generator is actually very uh, simple to use. So you can choose what type you have. He just has default to generic, um, but this one will be say like an entity. Uh, and then you could pick some items, so like stone, and then you can add some conditions. So the conditions could be like, uh, maybe you have a killed by a player. So it has to be killed by a player. This won't drop unless it was killed by a player. Uh, so this just would make it so if a player kills them, it gets stone. If it just dies naturally, it won't get drop stone. And then you would copy this loot table into a .json file, which you can find, copy and paste, or make your own by oh, making a new text file, and then doing save as, and then going to, when you're saving it, you just go to, click here, I have way too many file types on my PC, go to all files, and then do .json, and when you save it like this, then it will save as a new JSON formatted file. Uh, now, you pop, copy and paste the JSON text into here, and then it will update the loot table. So when I type slash reload, instead, you should drop a stone. And uh, I don't know how I could kill him otherwise. Uh, let's kill the pig. All right, so I killed it, and it didn't drop the stone because it wasn't killed by a player. All right, so that's how entities work. Now, if you want to give an entity a loot table, you have to give them the tag, MBT tag of death loot table with the quotes and then the name pathway to your loot table. So you put the namespace of your data pack, so test, colon, and then the folder and the subfolder all the way to the file. And you can get this if you're having some trouble. You can do loot give at p loot and then you start typing and find the one that you want and then copy this piece and put it into the quotes. Just like that. All right, so that's how you do entities. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper into how loot tables work now uh, with the chest, how to do chest loot tables. So chest loot tables, it's putting random items in a chest. So let's go ahead and grab this. So I have this chest and when I put it down, it has a stick. When I put it down over here, it has a stick in another place. When I put it down here, it has a stick in another place. When I put it down here, yeah, stick in another place, stick in another place, and now there's a stone. All right, so then I can also click this, and it'll have different loot each time I click it, but only one item. All right, so chests are actually interesting. So there's two main components of loot tables, really, to think about. There is pools and roles. Well, there's pools and entries, okay? So if I add an entry to this pool, okay, so I have a stone. Let's remove the conditions to simplify it. And now I have a stick. Okay. So when you have entries inside of a pool, it's going to pick one of the entries. So since I have two, I kind of want to do, I need to have weights, right? I, I think that if you don't put any weights, then it'll just give you everything from it. But uh, that's actually something I haven't tested. So I could just go ahead and do that to this guy. Slash loot give at P loot 
test porky. Uh, no, I think it just picks itself. I think it just does a 50-50 chance. Anyways, so weights, you put them down, they give you different chances. So the way it works is that uh, you add all the weights up inside of a pool and your chances are whatever item you're looking at divided by the total. So my, if I put them both as one, my odds are, so let's add them all up, one plus one is two. So my odds for stone is one over two. Now if I make this guy three, then my odds for stone is one plus three is four. One over four is uh, 25%. So that's how weights work. They kind of like let you change how often something shows up, bigger the weight, more often that thing is gonna show up. Uh, makes sense, weight, it's heavier. Now as for pools and rolls, so rolls let you pick how many things from this pool it will grab, that way you don't have to be redundant. So let's say you want to pick between stick and stone, but you want to do it 10 times. So I'll give 10 stone or stick with the stone showing up 25% of the time. That's what rolls has to do with. Um, and then you can add another pool to this loot table. So then it will just, it will do 10 rolls here and however many rolls from here that you want. So then, and then it'll be a whole nother thing. So the, these things can get really big, especially when you start adding functions and conditions. So conditions are like, this will happen if this condition is met. And there's all these conditions you can look at and we're gonna explore some later. Um, and then functions, functions are modifiers to the item. So you can make it like 10 stone if you wanna do set count, or you can do like uh, set lore, or you can do like set name to change like some MVT with it, or set MBT, which lets you put custom MBT. Um, so there's a couple like custom functions that let you change the item. And then conditions are like things that, it'll give the item if you have this condition. Uh, and then you can put global conditions as well, which are just like conditions on the whole pool. So this is like the pool will happen only if these conditions are met. And same with functions, you can put global conditions on the whole pool. So all the items have that. All right, so hopefully I'm not blowing through this too quickly for you guys. Uh, there's a lot to go over, maybe go back and hear me talk about it again if you need to. But anyways, so chess is pretty simple. We just have to have one and another option and then we just copy and paste it and we put it under chests, and this one's called sticks and stones. So I did the same thing, it has a weight of one and two, so it's a 33% chance of stone. Um, then it's a type of chest, as you can see up here. Uh, I did not switch the type to chest, obviously. Um, so now how I did this is it's actually called, it's a tag called loot table, and you put it for the chest. So chest with a loot table tag, and then again, you copy and paste the loot table from the list, exactly how you have it put in there, without the dot JSON at the end. Now, if you wanna give it as a give item, it is a block entity tag of loot table. So block entity tag is like, if you have an item, and when you place it, the block has this tag, then anything inside there will be the tag. So you could put items in the chest yourself, and it will just, put all the items in the loot table randomly around. And that's pretty much how you do chest loot tables. Now we'll move on to block loot tables. Block loot tables are pretty cool. So <laughs> what I can do with this is some of that, you know, well-known cursed Minecraft stuff, you know, where they break a block and something they don't expect comes out of it. And this is something Seth Bling did. He actually wrote a program that took every block in the game and reworked their uh, loot tables to be a different item that drops randomly. It's it's pretty simple to do um, once you have a list of all the blocks, which maybe I'll do a tutorial on that later. But for these, you really have to modify the default namespace blocks because you can't add your own block. So it doesn't really make sense to have your own block loot tables. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what block loot tables have to offer. So let's go ahead and remove these. Roll of one, let's add an entry. So you can drop an item, obviously. You can drop a couple different things. There are other things than just items to drop, but I'm just going over items. There's item tags. There's also, you can make a loot table, drop a loot table, and this helps with organization. Uh, if you have like some huge kind of set of loot tables. You can also make, uh, you can use alternatives. Um, which again, like read up on the wiki uh, if you want to see, but it basically means like you're picking a chance choice between this one and another one. And if you get to this choice, you can drop all these items. Um, and then you have sequence, like it's sequence and alternatives have similar usages. So alternatives, you have weights. Uh, so it'll drop like one item or the other. And then sequence, I believe sequence will just drop one at a time 
uh, but you can explore how they work by just doing some quick tests. Uh, there's way too many things for me to cover all the time. Group, I think group might just be all, do drop all the items. And then dynamic has some special attributes with like dropping player skulls and dropping what's inside the block that you're at and stuff like that. And you can explore those again, like on the wiki and do some tests yourself. I'm just covering the basics of loot tables. Um, anyways, so block items, it's pretty easy to put, put an item and it'll drop that item. Loot tables work the same here as they did always. Uh, so for this block one, I just have to go into loot tables, Minecraft loot tables, blocks, the exact name of the block. And then the rules here is a weight of one and it'll drop a string. Uh, and you can add some conditions for like exploded and stuff. Uh, but that's pretty simple. So now one quick thing to take a pit stop of. So one thing to keep in mind is to go into your dot Minecraft, your versions. Then you go into whatever version you're in, which we are in 1.16. I'll talk about that later, but go into your versions. Then right click on the .jar file, open with WinRAR or whatever archiver you have. And once it opens, you'll have access to the all of the stuff in the game. So you go to data, Minecraft, loot tables, and you can take a look at any of the default loot tables here. And you can like copy, say a sapling, if you want to maintain the sapling, but then have a special condition that will drop something new, which is similar to what I do with the shulker box loot table, where in a certain condition, it drops a doesn't drop a shulker box when you loot it. So those are like, you can get special information from here. All right, so this is going to be doing things based off of conditions. So I have a loot table pulled up here called Smokey. So we have Smokey false. If it's false, then put one stick. Then you have Smokey true. If it's true, put two sticks. And you can kind of see the conditions happening in here. Uh, so it's executing at me so that I do the location check at the player. And then it's putting stuff in the chest. So if I click it, there's two because I'm in the smoke. If I click it, there's one because I'm not in the smoke. Uh, so you can see those conditions happening and you can do, um, you can obviously do some scoreboard stuff. Those are sticks. I need to make them something that is not stackable. So an often used item is a golden hoe. So now when I click it and then I uh, click it, it'll say two. All right, there we go. Yeah, you have to use a non-stackable item. Um, but yeah, so you can see the smoky question mark go to two. Uh, but anyways, this is roughly how um, the data pack for biome checking works. It has a chest at a dedicated location and it uses a loot table to check for the biome and then fills it up. Uh, you can do a very similar thing with uh, monument checking. You can check if something is a stronghold, if something is a nether fortress. Um, and location check actually has a lot of cool uses. So let's go to condition, let's go to location check. And there's even more in 1.16, but you can check for biome, you can check for a feature, you can check for a dimension, you can check for a light level, you can check for a block, you can check for a fluid. Uh, there's so much to that you can check with loot tables. It's almost always good that if you have a doubt whether or not you can do something, just take a look at the loot tables wiki or just see if you can do it with a loot table. Um, because it has a lot of uses with the checking because the predicates are so fleshed out and there's even more in 1.16. But anyways, that's all I have for you guys. That's kind of an off-brand kind of challenge for loot tables. Try to recreate the functionality of a loot table, but with scoreboards. In case you're wondering what that would look like, it would look something like... Oh, like that. Or that. <laughs> it would look something like this. So try and recreate the functionality of a loot table, but using scoreboards and entities and probably a loot table in itself. Um, I'm only saying this as a challenge. Uh, you don't have to show me it. It's just something for your own good to see if you can do it. Um, it's very useful at times to do that because it's, it's a little bit more flexible than loot tables to go back and edit uh, commands themselves, but you can still use them for certain things. Anyways, guys, that's it. Um, it is 1.16. So I'm going to try to make a video on how to update to 1.16. Personally, I don't like the update. Uh, as you can see here, I'm getting kind of lower frames than I normally would. So things are a bit laggier. Um, so hopefully they fix that in a newer update. There's a couple data pack changes that I don't like, and uh, I'll talk about those then. Um, 
other than that, uh, I am working on a new minigame, as some of you know, and uh, it'll be out soon, pretty quickly. It's I've spent like two days on it. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.